Hey, what's up, guys? It's Gilbert Big Spooky Ackerman here. I wanted to bring you a quick announcement before we get into the podcast this week. Now, a little bit of some good news and some bad news here. So the good news is, as you guys know, we've recently started to add um, a YouTube video portion to our podcast. Now, the downside of this is we are still kind of learning a lot on how to use YouTube and how to set up recording and audio and graphic stuff. Um, so you're gonna notice this week in the YouTube video, we did some new graphic stuff and there's a, some quirky things about it. So we do apologize for that um, as we're refining the setup for that and the look of that. Please be patient with us. Um, in addition to that, we had some audio problems this week because we're using OBS to record and I just didn't quite set up the microphone correctly. So you're gonna be able to hear Hodes just fine, but my, my mic will sound a little bit more distant because it's only actually picking up Hoge's direction and it kind of bounces off the walls to be able to get to his microphone. Um, so we do apologize for that. The good news about that though is that's actually only about half the episode. The second half of the episode is going to be an interview that I had with Anka. She's a Grandmaster Jana player on the EUNE server and the mic quality for that works great. So for whatever reason that's frustrating for you and you can't listen to the first half, hey the good news is the back half audio quality is totally fixed um, and we would love to know what your thoughts specifically are of our interview with her. Without further ado, let's jump into the podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to Let's Talk League. Today we're going to be going over uh, our results from Clash, uh, talking about what went wrong, what went well, um, and then we'll actually dive into the LCS uh, standings where we'll talk about different teams, we'll talk about what's most disappointing, what our favorite game of the week is, and a few other things. And lastly, we'll be going into an interview with a high ELO player. So, without further ado, Let's Talk League. Alright guys, so we have... Um... We have a lot of fun things planned for us today. Um, so first and foremost, let's start off with, uh, with a little mind meld here, Hoge. Yeah. Are you ready? So real quick, rules are no league stuff, and we can't reuse a word. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Agreed. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Computer. Yellow. I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, one. Podcast. iPhone. Dang it. Three, two, one. Microphone. Apple. Three, two, one. PC. AirPods. Um. Okay. This isn't so good. We've lost our chance. No. Touchdown. Yeah, I know. This, this is, is bad. bad. Yeah. I would get one more chance. Yeah. Said AirPods. I said PC. Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one. Ding. Dell. Dang, oh my we gosh, so we were Dang. so close. Everybody just got an AirPod Pros. Dang it, that's unfortunate. I said Dell because I was just like, I don't know, but. Dang, rip. Okay, well, my meld failed this week. Sorry, guys. Oof. Uh, okay, so we have, uh, we have a question of the week. Um, uh, this is brought to us by Antonio Martins. Yep. Uh, so thank you for this. Uh, this is a fact he actually tweeted at us. Um, it's this, that actually, Hoge, your nickname means something in another language. Um, so you will get a point for guessing uh, the language mm -hmm. and a point for guessing what it translates to. Um, that, that, I mean, there's not really a point. like it. No, but there are points. A point system? Getting, a Hoge point, if you uh, Wow. And if you, you enough Hoge points, you can get Hoge bucks and redeem Hoge bucks for various prizes. Yeah. That's like, kind of, I was trying to make an office reference. Yeah, no, I know. I, know. I, I figured. I kind of forget what it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what does Hoge mean? What language is it in? And then what, uh, what, yeah, what language is it in and what is it translated From to? what I understand, there's like more than one meaning of Hoge in the language, though. Hoge is all so, things. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I remember I went on, just short detour, I went on... Uh, a website where like if you looked up the word hoge and like what it meant you were able to type in your own thing and so in hoge i typed in the very best like no one ever was um and, and then it just got swiftly deleted so, so uh, <laughs> one thing, not that i would necessarily recommend this but i urban dictionary by name this last weekend and i think i have the the results here i'm gonna bring it up and read it because i thought it was i thought it was pretty entertaining i was like wow this describes me so perfectly in so many ways uh so here's what it says first thing urban dictionary for my name it says a very small very young black child. She was straight vibing. Yeah, that's me. That yeah, I mean, what, what, what could describe you better? better? Yeah, than that. that was pretty entertaining. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, that's our question of the week. Um, he also asked us about the Zed, Talon, Darius, Garen, Nar buffs, um, specifically for the jungle. Antonio asked, yep. "Do we think it will affect their laning phase um, in the solo lanes?" Um, so here's here's my take on this mm -hmm. as a jungler, um, specifically with someone like Zed um, and Talon. I don't. I actually think it'll impact them the most, as opposed to Darius and Garen mm -hmm. um, and Nar, because they are mid lane players. So what this allows you to do is it allows you 
to while the enemy laner is backing, you can go push up on their chickens, like you know, and attack them. Yeah. And be able to get the experience for it, and then reset and come back to lane. You have that much more gold, that much more experience ahead. Sure. I think that's going to be the biggest impact from these buffs. Is you're going to see mid laners try to do cheeky things like that. Um, and they both both build lethality, so there's a lot of early game just pressure with that naturally. Yeah. It actually wouldn't surprise me if that's like a pretty common thing in solo queue. I don't think it's really going to impact it in pro play. It would feel a little bit weird to me to I, see him there. I think it depends like on the, the way that the n like next few patch shifts. Like if tank top lane starts to just become OP um, and like potentially carry, like carry junglers are a thing again. It could be that Sejuani is just like there and like you have... Zach and Sejuani and you have all these people that are very big mm -hmm. tank boys since th it's there but you potentially could see like if it's tank versus carry you could s see like a Talon or a Zed jungle mm -hmm. that just like focuses top lane and like gets far ahead but I don't know it, it would be very situational if anything I don't think I don't think any of these champs are really going to be seen in pro play because like yeah, I think you'll see them a lot in solo queue I do too I don't really I've already seen a bunch I've much. I've seen a bunch of Nar jungle already. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's the one I actually would have thought would have been least. By it's the confusing. Way, we should have done this. This would have been a little more professional if we done it on the front end. Oj, could you do me a favor and like lower your mic and bring it closer to you a little yeah. bit? It's like way more in the shot. Like bring it down, bring it closer. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go. There you go. There you go. Now it's a little bit more. It was like it was like way more. Like, like to the side. Yeah, like up here in it. Uh, not quite like that, but yeah. Cool. Anyways. Uh, yeah, that's that's my take on it. I, I think it will impact specifically mid with those. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, now let's talk a little bit about Clash. Yeah. Uh, so this was fun. We participated in Demacia Cup both days, Saturday and Sunday, and we went one and two on the day, which I didn't both realize days. this. Yeah, both yeah. days. I didn't realize this, but we won our first game both days, mm -hmm. but then we lost the next two, and it still put us in fourth. Yeah. And the fifth place team, even if they lost their first, they lost their first one, would have had to win the next two. Mm-hmm. To come in fifth, so the two and one team. Yep, it did worse lost than us. To the one and two team. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but that's like a really interesting, like structure, and I, it never came to my mind before. But hey, we took fourth place. Go so fourth. Make it, you know what I mean? Yep, it's, it's great by me. We are average. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, so we talked about this last week uh, from the Randomonium video. There is a uh, there's a guy who just released all these different team comps and mm -hmm. uh, how to play them. So we particularly focused around. Was it Attack and Protect? Attack Evaluation? and Protect, yeah. Attack and Protect, even though I think those were next to each other. Yeah. Um, those were ones that we played the best. So the first game on pr Saturday, not Friday, we did really well. We played very, uh, very Protect. What was our team comp? I was Varus. Uh, was... Noah was Orin. Dave was Cassiopeia. I was Varus. Sage was Braum. Yeah, so it was very much Protect, mostly Protect the Cassiopeia, Protect the Varus, keep them alive. Uh, we did really well. We actually were winning early game fairly solidly. Yeah. Um, we had some flounders in the mid game. Yeah, in my opinion, actually, my biggest critiques might be from that because I think we just should have ended earlier. Like, we let it kind of go on. We should have pressured while. Baron, probably. Yeah, we were playing a little bit safe. It was our first game back in it. Um, we ended up winning, though. It was great. Yeah. Uh, the next the next game, though, is actually where I want to spend a little bit more of my analysis because we were very much in this, like, team comp, let's build it and make it fit right. Yeah. And we were in the middle of operating that. And right when we got to the end of the draft, we realized, holy crap, we have screwed ourselves over. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened basically was this, is we picked Senna as an ADC. Yep. And we picked Vigar as our mid. Uh, they played Vigar. I don't remember who our mid was, but I, I don't think it was Cass. Vigar was Saturday. It was, uh, he, picked, he picked like a very... It might have been Vigar. I can't remember. Vigar. But here's the basic, the basic problem that we had. They had a lot of oh shoot sorry guys I just shook the cameras pretty hard. They had a lot of um, a lot of tanks on their team. They had yeah. Anasis, they had Mundo, and they had who else did they have? They had a third. Uh, they had really really. Uh, here people. I have the so Dave was Oriana. Oriana. Okay. We had Sage on Brand. They had Mundo okay. top. They had Jarvan jungle. Vladimir mid. Ash bot with Brom support. Yeah, so they had a huge thick tanky team, and we didn't have any DPS. So honestly, we could I could critique our play, you know, for you guys. Yeah, it just game, it was honest, just tough. There's it would have had to be a lot of really good playing by us and really bad playing by them to win that. We actually lost that one in the draft, but it was important yeah. for us to know that because even though it didn't necessarily translate fully to winning other games per mm -hmm. se, we made sure to always have a DPS threat. Yeah, and that made a huge difference for us, at least with that part of our team style. Um, so don't get. I guess the lesson I feel like I learned there is like don't get so lost in the meta strategy that you lose sense of the basic fundamentals right. of League. Like, if we just had a DPS source, I think that entire game looked extremely different. Yeah. But I think part of the thing, too, is we tried... 
so hard. And I, I think, so the randomonium comp thing helped us get our team comp there. But like in the, it, we overthought it a lot when it came to like our mid game decision making. And even just like some of the things that we were doing where we're like, okay, we're an attack team comp. What do we do? And it's like, don't think about it like that. Think about it as like, I'm playing league. What do I do? Cause I think mm-hmm. a lot of the time we had people who were like, well, this is what we're supposed to do. If with this team comp rather than like, there's an opportunity because this team is not that good. Cause we're in tier four. Let's do this thing instead, even though it's not like, like, cause like the, the way that I think we were viewing it too, is like, they're as good as we are in the same sense. And like, let's see, I'm not saying the teams we played against were like, uh, worse than us or like, actually, I think they were mostly better than us. Yeah. I think they were mostly like, better than us, but I, I still think there are mistakes that we could have capitalized on that they made that we were just like, we need to focus on group five V five fighting with an attack comp. It's like. Yeah, not always, especially when you don't have a lead. It's kind of hard to <laughs> group 5v5. Yeah. So Yeah, but it, it really taught us a lot because so to put yourself in an environment where you're as a five-man going against another five-man, there's just a lot of things that develop in that environment that, that don't develop anywhere else. It's like you can play pick up basketball your whole life, but until you put on a team against another five people and you're consistently forced to work with the same five people and the people on your bench, you're not going to develop the same way. Yeah. Um, I think that's a lot of what this was. We didn't know how to shot call as this kind of team. We didn't know how to strategize. Like we we haven't done this a lot. Yeah. Um, so it was really fun. And then uh, the last game was just, I think a lot of bad plays. Yeah, it was um, bad. We we didn't. Man, could you actually bring up our team comp again and remind mm-hmm. me? Yeah, on the Almost first super long on there. the first day, um, it was uh, that that was the one where. So this was really funny. And this one, like, I don't blame either on like the result of the game. This was we were trying to decide what we were going to do in draft and our top laner was like, so they, they picked Yi jungle and, oh, yeah. and our, we were like, okay, Ramus is a great counter in Yi. And that's like, kind of just like well-known. <laughs> and he just like, he has something deep within him. He just goes, I think Ramus as a Yi counter is overrated. He doesn't have a lot of great CC and he's going off in this rant. Meanwhile, it's like, Nine. All of us, all of us are like, like, hey, hey, hey 10, yeah, like, nine. lock in your hey, pick. Hey, lock come, your on, pick. come on, come on, come on. He's, him, he's him, still him. going. He's like, he's like, yeah, and this is why. And we were like, okay, then what does he play? And he goes, uh, and then just goes, Evelyn. And just like, like, but just, like it's going three, <laughs> yeah. two, one. It's on zero, and it's at the point where it's like, they're going to kick us out. They're going to kick us out. Zero to too long. Yeah. He just clicked on it just at the right time. He panicked, he clicked, but it was good. One, which is great, because yeah. out of all the, like, randos you could have picked for me or picked for anyone... I felt comfortable on it. We didn't sure. win. It just this wasn't. Fizz got disgustingly yeah. huge. He's twenty three and three. We just had. We had no answer. Yeah. Um, I think. I think a lot of that is just. Um, that was a game for me that I feel like. For us to learn about what it means to be tilted and how to like control ourselves, I think it also we also have to learn how to like control the pacing of the early game pre ten minutes. Yeah. Because we gave Kit Fizz four kills by twelve minutes, mm-hmm. and at that point. We can analyze everything after that, but that's, that's Doesn't not matter. as important as the four kills before it. Yeah. Um, so there was a really bad team fight by Dragon. They gave him a double right after he got like a kill on our solo laner. He came and then got a double, and it was like he got three kills. Yeah, we just we seconds. just didn't. Whoa. I think part of the thing too is like our communication was pretty bad. Like yeah, <laughs> throughout the whole throughout everything, it was like we had the games that we won. Our communication was fine. But it was like, hey, we need to work on these things. And then there's just like times. It wasn't. It was probably like ten percent of the time in our games where like things are happening, and I hear like like abilities going like like Nautilus Alt or like like Orn Alt, and I'm like, there's just like silence and like comms, and I'm like, guys, what's going on? Like, someone give me a heads up. I don't know what I'm doing, and like, I'm trying to like figure out context or game, obviously, but like. If you have someone there that you can talk to, I think it's like just easier. And yeah. we just kind of got in our own heads a little bit too. Yeah, where it's, it's it's good. I mean, when, whenever you start losing, is when the the mental pressure gets on. And it's hard yeah. to stay in it because at some point, what's going to happen is someone's always going to crack first on the team, and someone's going to get tilted. Oh yes. And you have to like figure out how to navigate them and that situation. Everyone like we're all kind of guilty of it, so it's, it's whatever. Oh, I tilted hardcore on our last game, and I was playing Tristana. Cause my computer yeah, was bugging that. my my computer was bugging out so bad. Like I was spamming my flash key and it wasn't letting me flash. And I was like, Ooh. I was like, this just sucks, man. I like, cause I'm like not worse than this ADC. I'm actually better. And I tried to buff. So I was playing into a blitzcrank and I was trying to buffer my jump as Tristana, mm-hmm. and it just it just lagged on me and it didn't buffer. And I was like, 
shoot. Yeah, I was like, this just kind of stinks. Like, I can't even counterplay the one thing that I picked this champ to counterplay. It's like, yeah. I don't know. But, I, yeah, so I think comms was probably, like, our biggest problem. Um, and then outside of that, I think we just weren't always decisive where we would say – I think – Part of the thing too is we like, and, and this comes into where we should be setting up plays a little bit more than we were. Where like, of the fact that a lot of the times it would come down to, are we going in? It's, yeah. And it's like five seconds to figure we out whether we're. Picks all the time. Yeah, figuring out whether or not we're going to go in in a matter of three to four seconds instead of saying, hey, we're oh. we're going to pressure around. Yeah. I was analyzing. I thought I was thinking draft first. You, yeah, yeah, you you no yeah for for yeah, like in game right. it's like hey we need to play around dragon. Do we want to take a fight there like a minute in advance instead of like, okay, 10 seconds, dragon is spawning. What do we do? Do we take a fight? Like, what are we looking to do? I think a lot of times people had different ideas of what we were supposed to do, um, whether or not that was like expressed or not. Um, and I think that's something just in general of like, we probably should have a little bit more foresight before we go into like a game deciding play yeah, of yeah, like yeah, yeah. dave is dead but we're not acknowledging it and we're gonna just feed the fizz <laughs> everyone give him goals. yes yeah um yeah so the, the next day sunday um again we won our first game the team comp was darius uh nautilus vigar zaya Brom. yep um and they were a set jarvin galio Jin, nami yeah um and that that was I, I don't actually feel like there's a ton of things for us to like probably analyze about that as weird as this is i don't like to analyze our victories as much um, um it's a little bit harder because it's like i don't think necessarily that we played super well but it's harder to pinpoint the weaknesses because we did win yeah. because like we made mistakes but the mistakes weren't nearly as big as what they were making mm -hmm. i think part of it too is i thought about this is my zaya was left open in a few games and i just didn't pick it and i was like i should just i should just do it mainly because Every team that we've played against was looking to dive either me or Dave. Mm -hmm. And having just the Zaya ult to disengage or, or get rid of one of their big core abilities mm -hmm. is just huge. Yeah. Um, and so, for example, um, in this game, they had a Galio, they had a Jarvan, um, they had a Nami. And anytime the Nami ulted uh, or people got in, like, I would, I would, the Jarvan would ult, and I would just kind of, like, be like, yeah, 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 that's fine, whatever. Um, and then Galia would go, and then Nami would go. Like, they weren't super good at, like, separating their ults. Yeah. So I would just ult once, and it'd be like, I'm unscathed, and then, like, pull back and do a ton of damage. So I think my Zaya was more valuable than I think I was giving it credit for. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was something I should have prioritized more. Yeah, and shout out, shout out to Dave specifically, because his Vigar was disgusting. Yeah, he was his like Vigar was good. 14 0 and 2, I think is what 14 1 and 9. 14 1 and 9. Oh, mine's, mine looks a little bit. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I was looking at wards. Yeah, 14 1 and 9, which is like <laughs> disgusting. PBA. Yeah. Um, he did so good. I, I feel like him and, uh, him and you specifically carried that game a ton. Yeah. It was a good um, game. It felt like a good one. The next one, though. Um, okay, so let's, let's go to this one, because this is, this is an example of a game that I think. We could have won and actually should have won. Had like if we played them again with the same team comp, I think we can win this. I'm a um, little yeah. So I died. I inted here, early on, but well, yeah. Here's, here's what it is. So it's Garen. They had Garen, Zach, Anivia, Caitlyn, Morgana. Mm -hmm. We had Darius, Nautilus, Cassiopeia, uh, Senna, and Tom Kench. Mm -hmm. So we had a defensive bot lane. They they drafted better there. Darius and Garen is a skill matchup. Um, Cassio so, into Anivia. Yeah, same kind of thing. So like they had, they had, and they, and then junglers is pretty neutral. Um, so like out of all the things, we just only kind of technically lost bot lane, but it's defensive. Like technically, Senna has a better Senna. win rate into into um, Caitlyn. Yeah. Um, it's just my our lane is a little bit more defensive with the Tom Kench as and opposed to the Morgana. Really, yeah, we, we took we took some bad fights. Um, Agreed. We didn't. We we didn't. I died early on. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. We just had, didn't have good timing around objectives too. It's like they were like a half step ahead of us, and we could yeah. never quite catch up. Yeah. Uh, big problem actually was the Zach. So Nautilus has great engage, but he can't take tricky angles. Mm -hmm. He's like very um. So like if we're thinking about chess. Yeah. He's kind of like the rook. He can go up and down and side to side, so it's very powerful. But if something gets in the way, it's it, it's just what he has to hit. But Zach was more like the knight, mm -hmm. so he'd go like up to and over one, and you can take really interesting angles. 
Um, and he just he just did that all game. He was able to get everywhere. He was able to put a lot of pressure. Yeah. Um, so I actually credit mostly the Zach for that, mm -hmm. but also credit the Anivia. Their Anivia was, was so good. It was like a 400k Anivia. Yeah. I think it was like a. Well, they they had so many high masteries on their team, and they, it, it looked like they were. Or it looked like they were just going to rotate between whoever would have, like because they had four people. It was like a Yasuo, a Karthus, and a Anivia. And one other thing, and we were like, the Anivia looks the least scary out of all of them, yeah. but was still really still good. Murdered us, but... Yeah. And so I gave up first blood by literally was like, it was one of the dumbest things I think I've ever done. I was like, oh, I'm going to go, like I was in the, we're on red side mm -hmm. and I'm going towards the blue buff. And like, I'm kind of in the top brush by mid lane where like the wolves are like kind of right there. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to go check the blue buff, see if anyone's there. I didn't ward over the wall. I just walked mm -hmm. into the bush. And all five of them were there. And I was like, why, <laughs> why did I do that? I was just like, that's stupid. Like, I would never, ever make that mistake in an actual game because yeah, that's it was dumb. Kind of and then the next game that we play, I was like, I'm going to drop a war tier because I wonder if they're going to do the same. All five of them went there. I was like, does everybody just do this? Like, yeah. is this just a thing? It's just the strat to go in yeah. Like we are in tier four, so. That's true. Um, which I have qualms with, but I'll get into that in a yeah. moment. Um, so, yeah, I think I think the last game there was actually, I think we lost in jungle pressure. I think if I'd pick a jungler that was either was quicker with the clears and could provide quicker ganks to up the tempo, or it had someone like um, Zach who I could take weird angles. Like Not that I play Kane well, but like Kane can kind of take interesting angles to gank. Someone like that allows you to create... Are you um, talking about the Poppy game? No, no. The, the oh, game, the, this, so, game, this the, game. This game. The, not, the, not the Poppy game. Yeah. yeah. The one where... Um, they were, wait, let me go back to it. Shoot, I just changed it. Uh, it was one where I was Nautilus and they were Zach. Yeah. Okay. So, like, I just probably can't play Nautilus if Zach is there. I need to play someone who's going to be more aggressive earlier and provide an earlier snowball lead or someone that can provide an equal amount of, like, unique gank patterns like a Zach. Um, so that's that's that game. Okay, last game then that we lost. Um, again, this is one that I actually think we could have won. I think we... Um, if we played them again, we could. Yeah. They had a rise by Mordekaiser, Jin Blitz. And we had a Trindamir, Poppy, Oriana, Tristana, Galio. Um, so here's here's why I think we specifically lost this one. Um, I think that in this matchup with Trindamir and Rise, like our top laner played Trindamir really well, but we didn't weren't able to get like an early kill to like give him more pressure. Trindamir's yeah. most lethal when he's 1-0 and has Tiamat after first back, and you're like, oh, crap, what do yeah. I do? Like, he just is able to, like, create a lot of presence. Um, that's That was, like, a big thing. But that, that wasn't more Cannoli's, Cannoli, or Noah, I'm sorry, Cannoli Cowboys' tag. Yeah. Noah's fault. I feel like I could have, like, set him up better to sure. be able to do that, and I didn't. I think, I think that was a missed opportunity. Potentially as an itemization thing also. Because he was going into the Mord, and the Mord has a lot of healing built into his kit naturally that you're going to have to deal with. I think just potentially, even though like you want the Tiamat early on, even just getting the Executioners first might potentially swing the lane. I could take be totally... Yeah, he had Teleport Flash. He I, take an Ignite. Uh, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't usually like taking Ignite on top lane, because if it goes wrong, you just get you just get kind of screwed over. You get stormed. Yeah, because like, you're like, oh, I died early. I just have to walk back to lane, and my top laner who has TP gets plates, and I don't. Um, yeah. And so it's like, ah, yeah, I'd rather just... Because I actually... Minor note, I played uh, into a Trinomir who took TP, um, and I played Aurelia, and I stomped... Or he took Ignite, sorry. played Aurelia with TP, and I stomped him, and I took his turret by, like, 10 minutes. It was gross. <laughs> That's disgusting. It was, it was great. It was, like, my third Aurelia game, and I absolutely stomped him, so... I think I think another big but, thing is, and this may seem exposing. I, you you mentioned it yourself. Before. I tilted. You got pretty tilted. I, I, was, I was I was out of like, it. I don't know what to do. And I was, think part of it, too, was, like, fatigue... Like, I was tired, it was late, and I was like, just so many games in a row, and most of them are bad. Like, even yeah. the good games are kind of bad. Like, you're like, mm -hmm. we're winning, but it doesn't feel good, because, like... Yeah, it just takes a step, it takes a step. Yeah, and, and so I was like... You Tristan in a while, too. I think you, I think, like, just even you're a little bit rusty on her. Yeah, I was... I, okay. You've gotten a double pentakill with her in the same yeah. game, so, like... That was Arden Sensor. Tristan yeah. isn't bad. No, yeah, but, like, it, it just was so. more of, like, a... I, I was confused at why my... A few things happened, too. Like, I was confused at why my jump buffer didn't work and, like, why my flash key wasn't working. Like, there's just a few things in general where it was, like, I feel like my computer is, like, the sixth player on their team <laughs> or I'm just, like, losing because my computer hates me. But the, so. highlight, the highlight of this, um, and then we, we got to move on just so we have time for some LCS stuff. Yeah. Um, but highlight of that game 
is I stole Baron. You did. Felt great. That's always a good thing whenever yep. I can do that. Uh, we still lost, but it felt really satisfying. It's, it's the one reason Gilbert loves playing Poppy is because <laughs> everyone forgets about Poppy's ult until they get ulted. And like, the, like, no, no, no. And you're like, oh, they're still doing the Baron because they don't realize their jungler just got ulted. Yeah. And then Gilbert <laughs> just takes it. It's like, go, I like uh, okay. It there, then. Oh, it's like crazy. it's like one of the easiest Baron steals Gilbert ever has to do because like Gilbert There's, gets Gilbert gets Baron steals on like almost everybody but Poppy <laughs> like I could get a Baron steal on Poppy if I did yeah, what Gilbert Hyper, did Hyper yeah yeah Hyper. that's true um, there was one time real quick story there was one time I was first learning Poppy and the there was a new deer that was hard carrying and he started Elder and he was just doing Elder by himself yeah and he got really low and I like ran in there to try to steal it but like instead of just trying to like E dash in there to sm out smite him. What I did is I like walked up to him with my alt, and right as I released it, he had gotten it down enough to smite it. And mm -hmm. He was such low health, so I was thinking I can kill him and take this. But all I did is he smited it, and then I launched him out of the pit back towards his base. And so like I didn't get the dragon, and I got he like got out alive. <laughs> but at least I could have killed him afterwards. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I just he got a free dragon and then got out. A jail card for free because of the poppy. My favorite is your early poppy whenever, like, we would be in a team fight and we're, like, bursting someone down and Gilbert just goes, good, to try and, like, secure the kill. And it just, like, sends him out with, like, two HP. And we were like, what? Like, yeah, yeah, early poppy, I didn't know what I was doing. Gil's early poppy was very troll and it was hilarious. Because it was, like, it, it was like Dave's early Talia when Dave would just wall, oh, yeah. Dave yeah, would yeah. wall off Same. our teammates from escaping. And we were like, Dave! What are you doing? It was hilarious, but all right. So let's uh, yeah, let's, let's go down. We got like we we said ten minutes apart for this, but I think we're gonna be at like nine. Yeah. Uh, the ideal for this is we have an interview that we're actually this is Tuesday night. We're filming. We have an interview with someone from uh, the EU NE tomorrow. Yep. Um. So we hope to be able to like add that on to the end of this. If for whatever reason something cancels or there's a problem, um, I guess it'll just be a thirty-five minute podcast instead yep. of an hour. Uh, we had another one that we recorded actually Saturday night or Friday night. Excuse yeah, me. the audio was a little buggy, so we're yeah, trying to yeah. fix it. We're gonna try to fix that audio so we can get that to you. So it was a master player from the LAS. Server. It's it's hilarious sounding it's cool. because our our voice pitch like shifted down, and we're like we're talking about league like 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 super deep, and it's at like I I don't know his mic's also super crackly for whatever reason when it wasn't when we were recording. So yeah, there, we, it might be unsalvageable, but we're gonna try to get it to you guys. If it is unsal unsalvageable, we're still gonna like release it with like hopefully a little bit better audio quality just so you can still listen to it um if the pitch is still shifted down that'll be really At funny least you can listen to it for 10 seconds yeah yeah meme us for yeah it. exactly so there you go. yeah um but yeah let's, let's go through the lcs cool um, Let's go through the standings. Do you have that brought yeah, up? Yeah, I do. So in first place, we got Cloud9 at 10-0. and 0. Uh, Second place, we got FlyQuest at 7-3. and 3. Third place, we got TSM at 6-4. and 4. And fourth place and, f well, tied for fourth, we have uh, Team Dignitas and Immortals at 5-5. Five and five. Tied for sixth, we have a four-way tie between 100 Thieves, Golden Guardians, Evil Geniuses, and Team Liquid at 4-6. and six. And lo and behold... The bottom feeders in CLG sitting at one and nine with their new mid laner in Poe Belter. Um, so the most impressive, obviously, is Cloud9, and I feel like it's kind of boring. I feel like it's kind of boring to talk about them at this point, just because it's like, wow, they're playing so well. Um, one negative I will have is I think Licorice looked a little bad this week. Mm -hmm. I think just in general his play was questionable. Like so. There's a play in the CLG game where it's the first time Cloud9 gets aced the whole year, um, which is against 10th place CLG. Um, Blabber goes for like a crazy kick um, in their base. And it's like, holy crap. So Blabber kicks back their carry and then Licorice ults the carry that Blabber kicked back right back into the enemy team. And so it was like, it didn't do anything. And then they just lost the fight. And it was like, yeah, that was a little that troll. Um but I think overall, it's like, if you were to make a first team all pro team right now, it would probably be all C9 members. Because I don't think anyone, maybe you could argue for like Broken Blade or like, yeah, that's fair. like potentially, yeah, maybe even like X Smithy, just because like he has a crappy team and he seems to be doing well. I don't know. It's like, it would be, you would have to make an argument. Whereas I think if you put Cloud9 right now in all five positions, it would be like, that's understandable because they're ten and zero. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I I don't really know if I have uh, when they think that that's okay. that impressive outside of C nine. I mean, FlyQuest doing good is awesome. Like, I think it's kind Power of, of Evil popped off this yeah. past week. It was against CLG. I just am like I, I don't know. I I am not 
on his hype train. I used to really like him as a player before he was with uh, sure. Zoptic. That he was with last year. Yep. Crazy. Um, yeah, I just I like when he was with Wait. Zips, I loved him. But no, no, he was with CLG. He was with Optic when he first came. Oh, yeah, then he yeah, moved yeah. to CLG. CLG. Yeah, yeah. I liked him when he was op- Optic. I didn't like him that much with CLG. I right. wanted to like him, but he just I, yeah. like he had a highlight week. I think he's gonna fall off. I don't think he's that good of a player sure. anymore. Um, that's my. I don't know if that's that bold of a take, but I just yeah. don't think he's that good. I do think it was a little bit weird that he got honored over. Uh, Vulcan? Vulcan yeah. yeah, he got robbed. Vulcan felt, I got think robbed. It just kind of felt pressure. So I think that's what it is, too. I think if you give it to all Cloud9 members, people are like, oh my gosh. Because I felt that way when Team Liquid was the all pro team um, last split, when it was like Sven Skarin was the only non Team Liquid player. Um, I was like, that's a little dumb. But like. When he went 2 0, he was 18 yeah. 6, and then he was. Uh, where was he? I'm trying to look at him right now. Uh, he was five zero and four. Yeah, Ariana, which is a comfort pick for him. Yeah, I don't know. He just he looked good in in both of his games. I think is part of it. He looks like he looked like he. I think you actually, if if I were to choose a player of the week from this past week, even though I think their team went one and one, Jizuke in mm, when he geniuses, with his like yes, liquid? I think yes, I think it's against Liquid. Yeah, um, he's, he's playing Zoe. Yeah, he like. Kind of hard won them the game. Yeah, his KDA wasn't all that great. But no, he, but he like, won bang, fights. Bang popped off there. Yeah, but he, yeah. he just set up a lot of good opportunities. He was like spamming that stupid drowsy bubble. He like, he sleepy, got was it sleepy trouble bubble? Mm-hmm. Like nobody's business. He it's probably so- solo got them one or two dragons, maybe three in that game because of because of his positioning because of like at the skill shots that he's landing he's like poking people out like he he played super well so that would have actually probably been if you're not going to give it to Vulcan probably give it to Jizuke because I think FlyQuest in a, a game that like sure he got a triple kill but like it, it doesn't really matter all that I mean Blabber got a triple kill against CLG too um but yeah um yeah, moving oh yeah sorry you're gonna go into the most disappointing one yes I'm going to the one that I have asterisks around because I think this is this is. Is it the TL Evil Genius one? No, this is, is it the TSM Evil Genius. This is one. This is Dignitas. This is Dignitas Team Liquid. Oh, okay, I I have ones against TSM and Evil Geniuses. Okay, I'm, do you um, mind if I go first? Yeah, go for it. Okay, for it. so this is, I I hate the draft. I hate the draft between Dignitas and Team Liquid. I was like, you know what? I think I think Dignitas is actually going to take this because I think they're they're still a strong team. They're going to do it. Um, and I was sold on them for a little bit i am now like I, i'm pretty sure in my like mid-season power rankings i put them below playoffs i am 100 percent standing by this because this is atrocious um they picked pantheon into set which is not a good matchup for pantheon because pantheon might win early but loses hard late game it's one of the global presence but then they didn't really draft around it huni had 50 farm at like 15 minutes Oof. I want to. I want to yeah, check this. At, he's at one, he was at one thirty six for the game, and uh, impact was at two oh eight. It's it's double. It was at three. It's they the the plays that Dignitas makes. I I honestly am not super high on Team Liquid, even though it's like wow they smashed that game. They Dignitas freaking fed. I like watch that game and I'm like my amazing. Clash game looks better. Like I could play paint. Like I I just it baffles me about how bad. They drafted and they played, and I was just like, "Come on, man! I don't want to." I was like in the camp of Team Liquid's not going to make playoffs, and you're giving them a freebie win. Like, why you got to do this to me? But I, this game was just bad from Dignitas. I mean, it looked okay from from Team Liquid. Uh, uh, Freaking Broxa played uh, Lee Sin and had a really nice, very clean looking Lee Sin kick uh, around the mid lane. I think he had one or two. Um, but other than that, it was more just like Dignitas fed so hard early game they just couldn't recover because they didn't have scaling. So yeah, I so the one the one right before that TSM and Evil Geniuses. I'm gonna roast Evil Geniuses here. Like I I I was pretty hyped on Evil Geniuses. I love Bang. I yep. think he's a great player. Man, in the game before this, he was I think seven and zero. Mm-hmm. Like the the other one he played against Liquid, like he hard carried. Sure. This would have been their time to shine. Listen, man, if you didn't watch this game, it was eight kills to one. Yeah. Eight to one. Yep. Evil geniuses, y'all had one kill. Mm-hmm. I had more than that. <laughs> in my tier four clash game. <laughs> like, how do you have one kill? And like here's here's the other thing. Kumo Kumo was set and he was playing into he's playing into Broken Blade, who's Orn, and Orn like bodied him hard. Which like I get Orn's in a in a in a like a heavy spot. He's right in a good now, spot, yeah. But not enough where it beats set. 
Like, yeah. I, I won't give you an out there. I will say out of all the matchups, Set should be able to beat Orin. These Set has a good matchup in Orin, yeah. Like, he should have won that, but he just kept dying yeah. in the top lane. He, it was it was insane to me. It was and sad. The, the fact that Bang ended O, O, and O. You got yeah. the triple zero. Yeah. That is... It's bad. Bad. Mm-hmm. That you couldn't create more of an opportunity than that. Yeah. And, 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 and here's the thing. You, you have good players. You have a good team comp. You have Jazuke on a comfort pick. You have... Uh, Sven Skarin on a comfort pick. You have Bang on a comfort pick. You have Zazel on a comfort pick. The only one who's not on a comfort pick here would maybe be Kumo, but you're playing Set. Set's in a good spot. Like, yeah. There's no excuse why you shouldn't be able to beat this team. Now, I get it. There's going to be some haters out there who will say, like, yeah, but they have Kabe, and they have Bjergsen, and they have Dardoch, and they have all these players. I get it. Yeah. What I am saying is you have enough agency on your team to be able to create more pressure than what you did. Um, and the fact that you didn't even, like die more mm-hmm. shows me that like when i watched the game it felt like they weren't really trying it felt like yeah. they were just slowly letting it drift away from them and they didn't want to fight so for it like, i think if it was 13 to 1 i'd be like that was a bloodbath sure but i would potentially argue hey you know what maybe they took a couple really bad fights and they kept taking them mm-hmm. but they were like bloodthirsty like cloud nine from two seasons ago i saw like a, even a little bit last season you see them take some really bloody fights mm-hmm. they were like Oh, they shouldn't win that, and there's times where they just didn't win it because it was a bad fight, and yep. I get that. But like, at least I respect you going in. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I want to say like, man up and like, it's go like, hard and play. It's like what Team you Liquid I mean? was doing in the beginning of the split too, where it's like we're just dying, and you can just slowly take everything from us. Don't take it too fast, because then we're gonna we're gonna end up coming back a little bit. But I think part of the thing too is I was saying this towards the beginning. I think that. The there's big playstyle clashes between the the players of like thinking Jizuke, who's like the most aggressive player. I think I think of the sage of mid lane, um, where he's gonna go for crazy things and he might get them and he might pop off or he'll int really hard and he'll like his LeBlanc game early in the season. I forget who it's against, but he hard carries that game. Mm-hmm. Um, he had one play where he ints under the turret, but like other than that, he hard smashes that game. Um, and there are games like the C9 game where he's playing rumble and he goes like one in five and it's like, he's inting. Yeah. But when you have a guy who's very volatile and then an ADC, who's like a Korean ADC and he's, very much like comfortable scaling and doesn't really like taking things aggressively and you have a support who's not super good in laning phase not super good early it like creates this weird like composition where you're like i don't know how this team decides on what they want to do and you can kind of see that especially in like player interviews with bang where he's like i'm just one guy like but it's like that does not sound good you sound like you don't trust your teammates at all um and so I'm a little worried about the team. So let's let's do this. Let's move on because we're we're at, we're at cap here. I want to make sure we have time for the interview. Um, sure. Let's just let's just say this mid split MVP go. Uh, I I'm gonna say Cloud Nine One and then a non Cloud Nine One. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say Zven is my Cloud Nine One. Uh, KDA Lord himself. Um, my non C Nine One is going to be. I'm gonna say Ignar. Um, mm. I think Ignar is part of the reason why FlyQuest is doing really well. Um, I won't elaborate on that too much because I know we don't have time. But yeah, I'm just going to say Sven and Sven. He's the only one. <laughs> there I'm you go. I'm not going to even say it's not yeah. He's the only one. If they go 18 and 0, I think you have to give it to Sven. No or question. someone on Cloud9. I don't think you... Because like, no one's done it. So... Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome uh, to an interview. I have Anka here with me. Um, Anka, thanks so much for joining us on the show today. Yeah, I'm so glad to be here. It's like, uh, really, I was really surprised to get the message from you. And I was, yeah, sure, I want to do this. I was interested. Yeah, well, I mean, you're you're definitely good enough. Uh, so for context, for those of you who are who are joining us now, uh, so I found Anka on, on Reddit. Um, she had just hit Grandmaster as Janna, um, which is like the top, I don't know what it is, top 0.5% of players or something like that. Um, and you're the, is it the European East servers? Is that what it is, EUE servers? Uh, European, uh, Nordic and East. Yeah, it's Northeast. like I've, okay. I think I'm rank 400 right now, something like that. But GM and Master is kind of the same thing on that server right now. I think. Okay. Like not much of a difference. That makes sense. Okay. Well, um, yeah. So I guess let's let's get to know you a little bit, Anka. Um, so how did you get started playing League of Legends? 
Uh, in high school, I was like talking to a group of friends. I was spending a lot of time with them, and a few of them were playing league. So that kind of just got me into it. There was this one guy who was gold, and I thought it was like so good. He was gold free at the time. I was so impressed because, you know, I was when I started playing ranked, I was silver three or two. So I thought, oh my god, gold free, it's like next level. <laughs> well, that's that's uh, it's a little bit of a shame here moment. Uh, the highest I've ever hit is gold three. So that is that is Which... gold two sounds like wow, gold two sounds awesome to be in. But unfortunately, <laughs> I am not talented like you enough to be there. Um, so yeah, so I guess um, did you did you start off? Now I know in your post you said that you hit Grandmaster as Jana, but did you start off as support or did you go to did you start off a different lane or how did that progress for you? No, actually, I, I, this season I think it's like the first one where I seriously only play support pretty much. Like when I started five six years ago, something like that. I I was basically a Lux one trick. I still have like one million points on Lux. Generally, it's even oh. close to that. Oh so just... my gosh, a million? A mil? I think a million point two, something, something like that. It's something insane. I was just, just a Lux one trick. I actually hit Masters with Lux uh, like last season, but oh. then just she kind of started being kind of bad, and I, I just thought to myself that I don't have the mechanics to play something else, so I'd rather just play support, and you know. Wow. That's that's insane. So I have I have three hundred thousand points on Vi because I just like Vi and I like punching things. Like she's very simplistic. She's fun. Um, and my friends make fun of me. They're like, Kilver, you have three hundred thousand. But one million, no life. Real, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one million, no. But one million is good dedication, especially if you can hit masters on that. Like, I I am not even in gold yet this season. I'm silver one right now. I'm not even gold yet and I have that much on buy. So like I think I think I'm the big loser here. I probably should be better than what I am right now. Um I think I probably sp- spent a lot more time than you playing league, so I don't think it's anything to be ashamed of, about. So. <laughs> so this um this guy that you met who was I guess gold three or gold two at the time, um, is so he, he got he's what got you into league. Is he the person that got you into playing ranked or like what drew you to wanting to play ranked games? I had this one friend who at the time, and that's, I think I started season five, uh, maybe, no, five, season five, and there was this one guy I knew also in real life, and he was D1 on EU West, which at the time was absolutely insane, like, it was the guy, I haven't talked to him in, like, a few years, but he was absolutely insane, and he was like, come on, you have to play ranked, like, you know, (laughs) he told me that I could hit diamonds, I was like, I didn't believe him, like, Obviously, it was just for saying that to get me to play ranked, but. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I guess he saw something in you. You know, he saw your your talent and your ability to be able to be able to hit that. I am. I do not think I could hit that. I am definitely not that good. No, uh, I think okay, you okay. could okay. hit diamond if you. I think everyone could can hit diamond if they applied themselves. So. That's fair. Like That's, you definitely could. I just need to apply myself. That's fair. I don't. I don't have a tendency to do that. I just kind of like to to goof around. I like playing Nautilus jungle and. Uh, Shen jungle and Maokai jungle, like kind of weird, quirky picks that really don't belong in the jungle. Um, maybe I'm just a top laner at heart and I don't recognize it, but I like playing those, and that's probably why I don't do so good. But um, so here's uh, here's here's my next question. So you're you're grandmaster now, which is amazing. Congratulations, that's Thank am- you. like Thank you. literally insane. Um, I love that. Um, Thank you. From what I can gather, this is the highest you've been, um, correct? Yes, yes it is. I mean. Uh... Technically, I was challenger in flex, like in season seven, but I know no one takes that seriously. So this is, yeah, this is the highest oh, wow. I've ever been in solo queue. You were challenger though, as Lux in season seven. In flex. Oh, in flex. Okay. In uh, flex. flex yeah. I, I still think <laughs> yeah, that's no, <laughs> no so one else does. So. Give give us some context for kind of some of those who listen to us. And um, so we have a lot of people who listen to this podcast who are. Um, kind of intermediate in their league experience. You know, they're sitting around the silver or gold elo and they're dreaming, how could I get, you know, really high on the ladder? How long will this take me? Um, so can you give an estimation of how many games or hours or like a time frame of how long it took you to get there? I mean, this is not going to be good. Like I have thousands of games. Like I, I probably reached the number of 10,000 games. So like if you want to, unless you're like super talented, which personally I wasn't, you need like a lot of games. You have to spend a lot of time into it. It's like don't okay. let that discourage you because it's like super fun to play, but you do need to play a lot yeah. to get better, especially since the meta changes. So yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's a very fair point. So like, let me, uh, let me ask this. So you said you started playing in season five. 
Um, we are now in season 10. Out of all of those seasons, I guess excluding maybe 10 since it's the beginning of it, which one of them did you put the most time into the game? Or has it just built steadily over time and it's, you know, um, now currently peaking or you've plateaued at, you know, 2,000 games a season or whatever it is? Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, I def- no, I, I don't. I definitely don't play as much as I used to anymore. I used to play like maybe five to ten games a day when I started for the first. Okay, not every day, but when I would have time, like for example, when I was uh, I was in high school at the time when I would be I would have my summer vacation, mm-hmm. I would play like maybe eight hours a day of league, something wow. for three months. So that was that was pretty insane. I don't do that anymore. Like now I just kind of, I have my client open like the whole day basically and I see the people in my friend list, I talk to a few of them, maybe I, I play my DK game, I, I ask my other friends what's up, how are, how are they ring, but I don't really play that much anymore, it's just, okay. or maybe yeah. ARAMs too. So. Yeah, it, it makes sense, you kind of get, um, it, life gets busy and it's harder to, to stay as, as active in that. Um, so let, let me ask this, when you were when you were grinding out all those hours of solo queue in high school, did you do that by yourself or did you do that with like the one of your friends from high school or a bunch of friends like were you together or was that just truly by yourself that time uh that time i didn't play that much by myself it was always with a group of friends i mean ranked it was yeah we all, also with a group of friends just different friends uh yeah like i started with a group of friends in high school then that group of, cha- of friends changed as mm-hmm. time went on like i would meet other people like from my country and then from other countries i was still Fine, but I never really played by myself, no. Okay. Yeah, I, I in my climb last year, um, when I was trying to get to gold, I was doing a lot of solo games, and I was I was doing them by myself. And there's just something about that psychologically that is makes me kind of sad. Like, I would, like, you know, go spend six hours at night playing games, and I'd, I'd leave, or I'd go to bed and be like, I didn't talk to anyone this evening. I just sat in my room. Um, oh, I thought that would the, make you super happy to like get all that by yourself. I thought you'd be like, oh my god, look at I I got to this rank, I achieved it all by myself. No one can tell me I, you know, got yeah, boosted true. to it's just mine. No, that's true. But I, I, I there would be several days I would just break even. So I'd go three and three, and I'd be like, dang it, why did I do that? I said, no, my waste is five out, hours. Like, you know, I have like plus two LP. I'd be like, <laughs> it. that was so frustrating. Um, but okay, so next next question, um, and th- this is some of the you know the bulk of I guess our conversation here. But Grandmaster is very much top of the food chain. Like you know you are the royalty, and the rest of us um, are just the peasants that like look up to you. Um, I know there's a lot of differences between what you do and what lower elo people do. But what are the biggest differences that you've noticed about playing support in high elo as opposed to low elo? I think it's all about being super aggressive where possible. Mm. Obviously, if I see someone playing better than I expect them to, I will maybe play more passively if the lane goes that way, if I see them like being being super good. Mm-hmm. But some people have that mental barrier sort of where they see uh, what might be classified as a lane counter and they're going to be like, okay, I can't I can't win this lane. I'm just going to sit back behind my AD carry. I'm not going to do anything. I'm gonna, just going to try not to die. And that's a super... Like, it's something that they impose on the, themselves that they can't win that lane, where that player might not even play that well. Like, even if it's a lane counter, he might not know why it's a lane counter. He might not know what to do. So it's it could be abusable, but because the person doesn't trust themselves to to actually play into it, they won't get those advantages that are really easy to get. Another difference is, mm. in support at least, it's division. Mm. Like, I will play against people. Even on my Smurf, I have, like, a low diamond smurf that I will I will check the enemies at OPGG and I will see the enemy support at least they're gonna have like maybe two control words per average in their support mains and I, my brain just kind of goes like I can't lose to this because <laughs> like I can't lose to this this person doesn't buy two control words per game that's insane and it's just the, the lower elo you go this kind of happens every game I think I, I don't think I see many people who buy more than two they're like they buy one and then they place it and maybe they buy another one if it gets removed. And they just leave it, or they just leave it there for the whole game. So let, let me let me let, okay. So this is a spontaneous question here. How many control words would you say you buy on average for a half hour game? How many control words will you buy as Jana, or as I guess any support? I don't know, maybe like fifteen. 
Like I'll okay, have wow. probably games where I buy like 10 or something. Yeah, but it's it's different because as a support, you already have the support item, which only costs for 100. Mm -hmm. So, you, and you have the boots too. So you only actually need to buy four items. No, I'm sorry, three items. And that, that leaves so much gold for the control words. Like I will always have, I'll never be full build traditionally. I will always have that one spot that's just for control words. Even when yeah, the game goes to 60 minutes. That's that's something I noticed. I, I've been playing longer, or I've been playing since season six, so I should have noticed this sooner. But it was at the beginning of last year that I I really noticed that like a lot of pros will end up being full. Like there'll be you know five items at like thirty minutes or whatever, and the rest of us would be like three and a half maybe by that point in time because we're bad at farming. But like they always they until they have enough to buy the sixth item outright, they often just leave that slot open um, for wards because vision's just that valuable. Um, and I, I had never noticed that. And I was like, wow, I'm kind of dumb. I should I should farm better and I should be more aware of that. Yeah, I mean, when you think of it, you know, what's what's a blasting one compared to a control word when the enemies have a twitch? Like you yeah. or an Eve or another champion that can be revealed. Like it's mm -hmm. Even if they don't, like it's so insane. You put the control word in the Baron pit, the, the enemy jungler can't see it to steal it. It's like they have so many uses. So definitely buy more control words. Yeah, that's 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 good advice. So if you're supporting, you're listening to this, and you want to get better, first things first, buy more buy more control wards, please. <laughs> Prioritize that. Um, so let me let me ask this follow up question uh, to being at the the top of the ladder here. What do you notice that is different about the culture of playing at a higher um, higher elo, like higher in the ladder? Hmm. Like I would say, target bounds are more of a thing, maybe. And you remember everyone that you play with, like who tilts easily, who plays well, who's a one trick, who has like that really, really weak mental, who's gonna AFK, rage quit, and everything like that. And you, you can dodge those. So it's like right when I see a person that I know has into the game that had me in it, like I'm just gonna mm. I'm just going to dodge. So that's really good. Um, there's also the downside to that because other people might might remember me if I did poorly in one of their <laughs> games and they might flame me in champ select, in which case I will also dodge, because I do not want that. <laughs> I don't want that kind of negativity in my games. Yeah, I don't blame also, it, yeah. Also, people have really insane egos. And, you know, like, I have an ego myself, so I get the, I get where they're coming from. But <laughs> a lot of them kind of go so overboard with it. And they'll flame based on division. The they'll be like, oh, look at this. Um, like, depends, depending on the time of day where you play, mm -hmm. I'm like, right now I'm GM, I might get a game where I'm in, it's a full challenger game. Or I might get a, a game where I'm with like high diamonds and also some challengers, but mostly high diamonds. Okay. And there are and there are some challengers that will flame the high diamonds for like being in their game. But what they don't realize realize is like they will flame them for being diamond, but it's not their fault for being in that game. Like it's the matchmaking. They didn't do anything wrong. And the fact that they're in that game, like in my opinion, it makes it that they deserve to be there. You shouldn't just Right them just, off. Yeah, they just get stuck on that mentality that this player is diamond, he's going to do worse in this game because of it. Like, it's just, just wait, how, see how the game plays out. You know, don't flame. But I guess it's just so would, too much. So would you, would you say that challenger players flame more or do bronze Yasuo players flame more? Which one's worse? <laughs> I think... It's probably the same. Like I know there's like that misconception <laughs> that people suddenly get less toxic and high elo. Like people genuinely think that they're stuck in bronze because their teammates have a weak mental and AFK. And if they had teammates of a higher division, that wouldn't happen. But that's just no. That's just not how it works. There's no elo paradise where people suddenly are super nice to you. Like you, you go zero ten, but people are gonna flame you. There's no. <laughs> so what's uh, let me let me ask this then. What is can I can I ask what is the best KDA you've had at uh you know in, in master grandmaster and what is the worst KDA you've had? Does anything stand out? I mean I probably had a game with the perfect KDA. I can just open my OPGG and check for the worst KDA. Like I'll just see for my <laughs> last games. Okay, let's see. Oh right, there's this one Lulu game where I went. I don't even know why I picked Lulu. Jenna wasn't banned, she wasn't picked. I just didn't want to play her, I guess. Bad mistake. I went one, twelve, and twelve. I Ooh. don't know how I got those 12. It was a really rough game. Like, I got the enemy support with this fiddlesticks just absolutely destroyed me. I just <laughs> can't. There's no easy way to say this. I was 1-12. I did not play well that game. 
It's a rough one. And the saddest thing is that we might have won that too if I wasn't so bad. Like I just, it wasn't just me that made mistakes, but I made so many mistakes. Like maybe if I played better, even being one old, maybe we could have won. But kind of, I kind of held my team back in that one, for sure. That's funny. I remember my very first ranked game ever, and I was like, I'm, of course I'm gonna play Vi, you do? I'm a Vi main. and it was. And I remember I went 0 and seven by like 10 Ouch. minutes, and I was getting roasted for it. I was like, oh, I'm never doing ranked again. I ended up doing it, but it was it was humbling. I was like, oh, I don't know anything on how to play this champion. I am trash at the game. Oh, it's so. Did you blame you? Oh yeah, they 100 percent. Oh. We had, I think, I think we had like a, I think we had a Zed mid lane or two who was just real mouthy, like he was just going to town and like ripping into me, and I was like, well, it's fair. <laughs> I am doing really, really, really bad. It was your so, first game. It was what? It was your your first game, like first ranked game. Can't be that mad at yourself. Yeah, it's it's just a good story now. It's like, well, that was embarrassing. I will always remember, and actually, I remember the first season I played. Uh, I was I was just bad at ranked. I didn't know how to think about it. And I ended up, this is when they had five divisions. They didn't have iron. It was season six. So I was the bottom of bronze four at zero LP. <laughs> and I lost three games in a row. And they still didn't devote me to bronze five. But I was there and I was like, oh no, I'm going to be bronze five at this game. I didn't, didn't end up happening. I ended up climbing out and I... I think I got to bronze one or something. Like, I wasn't very good. But um, didn't ever hit bronze five, which is satisfying to say. <laughs> nice. No, because your MMR is much better than that. Like, even when you get placed in bronze in the beginning, your MMR is still, like, silver three, silver four, something like that. So it wasn't that bad. Yeah. That's that's an optimistic way to put it. That way I feel better about myself. <laughs> yeah, no, you probably play against silver players. Like, even though you're bronze, you probably play against, like, silver players. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So um, here's here's uh, the next question then, um, and this this is specifically what caught my eye when I saw your post, because I feel that Janna is a very unique champion nowadays. Like, I haven't really seen her be super big, unless I'm crazy. I feel like it was Worlds 2016 when it was like Ardent Sensor Meta and it was Janna Lulu everywhere. Um, but yet you've managed to climb with her extremely well. Um, what about Janna syncs up with the way that you think about the game? Like, how have you found success? on a champion that some people have said is, like, good, but not great. She can be super aggressive in lane, and I'm a, I am was a big fan of Enchanters in general, because I, I was pre-made with... Um, I was playing mid, but I was pre-made with an AD carry, so then I was like, hey, I'm just going to try to support you. So I, I tried playing all these champions, like Karma, Janna, Lulu. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a super big fan of Janna back then. Like, I first time I tried her was a couple of years ago. But now mm -hmm. she, she was... Mini reworked, I guess. She can be super aggressive with the. It's not a W max, but you put three early points in W and then you max your E before level 11. Mm. And with Comet, you deal so much damage to the enemy AD carry that whenever they step up to farm or anything like that, you just harass them constantly. They don't get to play the game. You also. Like, if you don't have to worry about specific kind of damage, like either AP or AD to go for Merc Treads or Ninja Tabais, you can still just build Mobis, roam mid lane every time you back. You can also help your jungler a lot. It's just such a good champion all around to get everyone ahead, not just bot lane. She's like actually just so strong when you played her correctly. So how do you, um, let me ask this then, because I feel like I played her once and I didn't know how to do this. How do you know how to place your tornadoes correctly? I feel like they're always, like I always miss mine and I feel kind of like an idiot. I'm always like, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can you definitely get used to it, but I I miss a lot of mine too. Like it's not it's not like exact science. You just kind of guess, and you have probably more luck if you place them in like fog of war. Like if you go there's the alcove now, so you can go in the alcove and just place them from there, and they're not gonna see it coming. And it's mm. I, I like I can't explain exactly how to use them. It's just you know where you think they're gonna be two seconds from now. But sometimes it works, and when they do, it's such a good engage, and your you, you just follows up, and usually oh. a kill. Sorry about that. I had a I had a friend calling me, I guess, and it came through. Hopefully he won't uh won't call me again here. But uh sorry about that. Yeah, that's uh All that's good. A, All good. That's uh that's a good way to use her. I, I'll have to I'll have to try her out again. I um I, I only play kind of troll supports, literally and 
figuratively. I like Trundle support, which was really hasn't been played again since like I feel like World's 2016. But he's just like yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he's just kind of fun. Like he's just kind of kind of derpy. Um, so let me uh, I guess let, let me ask this then with with Jana. Um, so this past you know I feel like year has been a lot about hard engage lanes. So taking champs like Nautilus and Leona. Um, they're really big right now in the meta and they're just, they, they have been for a while. How do you survive against them specifically even pre alt? Cause at least with your alt, you can kind of disengage from a hook, but that's not up that often. How do you survive while playing them as a Janna? Well, they're definitely tougher lanes than usual, but I do my best to bait out their engage tools. Also, you can, you can queue if you're, if you're a good Janna, which I like to think I am, but even I don't do this all the time. I don't manage to do this all the time, but I try. You have to queue. You can stop, interrupt her uh, E when she tries to jump on your AD carry on, or on yourself. You can just kind of queue her out of it, so that's cool. Uh, Nautilus doesn't quite work the same. It's still, I think it still goes through. I'm not sure. Either way, like you, what you have to do is bait out, try to bait out their engage tools. Like you play, you have to know their ranges really well, which with Nautilus, it's such garbage because he has such a disgusting yeah. hitbox on his Q. It's like, yeah, okay, how did that hit me? But you have to <laughs> kind of know know their range and just play on the edge of it and just slightly go into their range. And they're just, they're just not going to be able to help themselves. They're going to try to hit it on you and you just walk out. It's, but you have, you don't have to predict it, but you, I guess you have to kind of, kind of have a good reaction to go back when you do see them using it. And after that, when it's on cooldown, it's just easy to go and poke with basic attacks, with Ws. There's nothing they can do, really. Okay. I will uh, I will try to keep that in mind the next time I I, I play her. I that that is I've, I like the idea of enchanters, but they terrify me in the face of those two. Like Nautilus and Leona specifically are like, ah, oh, I'm gonna yeah, die. Yeah, they're so strong. They're they're just so strong. Like, there's no other way to play this so strong. Hate to play against them for sure. So what is uh what is the best advice someone's ever given to you as a support, um, or just even as a league player in general? I think as a league player in general, the mentality is more important than any, anything else. And the advice would be to focus on my own mistakes. Like, it's just hands down the best advice I've ever gotten regarding a league and the best advice I can share. Like, I'm always reminding myself that no matter how bad I feel my team is, if Faker, or I mean the current support equivalent of Faker, was playing instead of me, he'd manage to carry it regardless. Like, my teammates' mistakes don't matter. There are always things I could have done better. Like, I mean, okay, sure, if you got the Ghost Clans new new, maybe it's just unwinnable, but as long as you <laughs> play to improve instead of blaming your teammates for every loss, you, you just... You kind of get better, so that's about it. Yeah, that's good. Who uh, who gave you that advice? Uh, multiple people, but I think I really took it to heart when I saw this. There was this post on Reddit, but made by a challenger player, and it just really struck out to me because he was he said something like, "I'm not going to tell you which champions to to play to climb which." Where it's a word or anything like that. He was just specifically talking about mentality, and his whole post just kind of struck out to me. It seemed mm. really smart. Oh, that's cool. Was that was that a recent post or was that a while ago? Uh, it was a few years ago. Oh, okay. So last uh, last couple questions here. Um, so the there's a, I've seen a lot of a lot of YouTube videos just in general talk about key bindings and certain settings that professional players or people who are at the top of the ladder ladder often use um so things like playing with screen unlocked smaller hud things like that are there any like key bindings that as a league player or maybe even specifically as a jana player that have been a big factor in helping you improve and get better hmm, i'm not sure i think maybe the target champions only uh and i use it as a you can use it as a toggle Mm -hmm. And it's on it's on my X key, so it's like really useful in lane. I don't W or auto attack minions. It just like it's turned on, and yeah, it's just targets champions only. It just does what it says it does. It's actually so good because I before I, I used to on Janna, on Lulu, other stuff I used on Lulu especially because you can E and you can E minions. Mm -hmm. So when when you're fighting, you definitely you definitely don't want to do that. You just want to shield your AD carry. It was really frustrating. I didn't know how to do it properly. I could click on their icon but that would take too long 
Mm. So this was really useful when I found out you could do that. that Other than sense. that, I'm oh, sorry. You oh. think? I don't know. I was I was to say I it's unfortunate. I play from like a MacBook, so my like I feel like my key bindings are a little bit um a little bit funkier than normal. I've tried to do I've tried to do that and I feel like I always maybe I'm just not thinking about it right. I always feel like I managed to screw that one up specifically. Like my character will stop walking or something will happen. I'll be like, oh, I feel like I did this and I didn't do it right. But um yeah. Yeah, you can but you can normally it's not a toggle, you have to keep it pressed like just mm -hmm. whenever you want to use it but you, there is an option somewhere like there, there's a setting specifically so that you can make it a toggle so you just press it and for the next i don't know however you want it just targets only champions until you turn it back on okay for... that's that, that's probably part of my problem then is i probably didn't have it on a toggle that's that's probably exactly what that is so i'll have to yeah. look into that that's good that's good all right so last thing here um final question is um you know, and, and let me just say this again. Thank you again so much for your time, Anka. This has been just a pleasure to interview you. Um, I love being able to learn from players like you myself and also help other people learn from players who are at the top of the ladder. Yeah, I'm really glad to, to be here too. So thank you for that as well. Yeah, for sure. So last question before we go then, um, is there anything else that you would like to say to those who wish to climb as support um, and are lower rank at the moment? I think maybe... How to snowball a lead is something that's pretty important because not a lot of people, like a lot of people say, I win lane, then I just lose the game and it doesn't matter. Specifically for bot lane, how you would want to do that is that you get the tower and then you get the dragon. If there is one, you want to swap top lane, place vision top side of the map, get the tower, hopefully kill the enemy top laner if it doesn't expect you to be there, get the herald, put the herald mid, get the mid tower, Place vision in the enemy jungle, and then you kind of want to just walk with your jungler and your mid laner and get kills thanks to all the vision that you've placed. Usually you're just going to catch the enemy jungler or the enemy AD carry going for buffs. Mm -hmm. And then with all the picks that you've gotten, like the kills that you have, you just go for more objectives, whether those be towers or the drake or baron or more vision in the enemy jungle because that kind of counts as an objective too. And mm -hmm. you just kind of repeat that over and over and over again and you just snowball your lead and it eventually makes, end the game. It makes it sound so easy. Like it's like breathing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just do this, this, this. <laughs> like it's kind I, of a list and you ha have to have it in your mind. Obviously every game is different, but those are important steps that you can kind of always stick to no matter the game if you have a lead. So yeah. Yeah, that's good. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Anka, for being here. Um, and for those of you who are who are listening, if you wish to uh, connect with us as Let's Talk League, um, we have our you know Instagram and Twitter bios uh, below. We'd love to know what you thought of not only our question about Clash and what you played, but also what did you think of of Anka's conversation? If you had thoughts, things that you learned, things that you thought were interesting, do me a favor, comment them below. Um, and yeah, we look forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Let's Talk League. We'll see you next time.